Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He 
has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven. You conquer the grave, you free every captive, and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive. And break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. God, you do great things. It's muted. Morning. Just push the button on the bottom. There you go. Good morning. Um, we want to welcome everyone, everyone here, everyone online. Um, we really appreciate you worshiping with us. Um, 
if you're new or online, uh, we welcome your comments. And if you to the website and uh, search for the connect button. Uh, upcoming events on July 8 at 11 a.m. your celebration of light for Bonnie Haygood that was yesterday so if you weren't there you missed it but it was was well attended, lots of family. July 9, we will be one-on-one -on -one Sunday. We'll be hearing from people who have been meeting one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, July 16 will be our outdoor service and sharing time. What is God doing? in your life. Our one-on-one -on -one ministry is our highlight this week. Uh, we don't want to just be a friendly church. We want to be a church where people can make friends. And uh, we're encouraging everyone to have someone that they meet with regularly, that you just get to know them on a heart level, not just hi, goodbye at church. Um, we will be hearing from some of those people this morning and uh, hear how that's encouraging your hearts. If you want to be a friend and have a friend, there's this form to fill out and you can leave it in the back. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are here with us. We thank you that because of you, our hearts are awake and we are alive. We pray that you would just bless this service. Let each heart be open to you. Let them hear from you. And may we share that. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll stand and, and join us and, and sing out like Aria is. <laughs> Bring your time. Bring your shame, bring your guilt, and bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more to me. Every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right. But that's alright. Cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed When others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world Who 
doubts and bring your fears. Bring your hurt and bring your tears. There'll be no condemnation here. You were holy, righteous, and redeemed. Every time I fall, there'll be those who will call me a mistake. But that's okay, cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed. When others say I'll never be enough. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. That it doesn't matter Cause the cross already won the war I am learning to run freely Understanding just how he sees me And it makes me love him more and more There'll be days I lose the battle Grace says that it doesn't matter Cause the cross already won the war I am learning to run freely Understand just how he sees me And it makes me love him more and more Cause I hear a voice And he calls me redeemed When others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world How great is our 
God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Worthy of all praise, my heart will sing how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Thou art. 
Are you just saying that? Or you really mean it? You sure? Okay. This is going to be rather a unique service. Okay, one thing, I'm not preaching. I'm what's called the master of ceremonies, I think. That's what Jeff said I was anyway, so I'm going with that. Um, I think I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. You at the moment are looking at a miracle. Me. And you go, what? What's he talking about? Not too many years ago, getting me up here would have probably had to be using like a loaded firearm. Okay? I don't do front of people. But here I am. That, like I said, is a miracle. God didn't give me that. Get up there and do it, John. I probably would not be up here doing this, even though Jeff said, John, could you do me a big favor and run it Sunday morning? What's my correct answer? You betcha. Actually, that's what I said. I said, yes, I would. Um, this morning is going to also be unique in the fact that we have four people, well, five, because I've got something I'm going to read to at the end, who have done what we're trying to do, which is get involved and make a friend. Is that easy? Well, for some people, it is pretty easy, okay? I will tell you flat out, I'm not one of them. I'm not that sort of person. But there are people here, and is that an excuse? Well, I'm using it as an excuse. It's probably not a good one, but that's what I'm using. How do you get to know a person so that you know the person? You have to spend time with them. It's like, I know everybody here on some level. Most of them is rather shallow level, I will tell you that right now. But I know everybody here, but do I know them on a close, friendly level? Nope. Some maybe, not everybody. In fact, not most everybody. Let me get my uh, eyes out here so I can read what I was going to read. And those of you that don't have to use these, it's coming. Our, I guess, church saying is, we don't want to be known as a friendly church. We want to be a church where you can make a friend. And I'm going to modify what Jeff said the last time he read this. It says, the main reason for going to church is not for your encouragement or instruction, but to give you an opportunity to encourage or support others. I'm going to modify that. The main reason you are here is to worship the creator of the universe, as we were singing about up there. Because if you're not coming here to worship the creator of the universe, I'm going to say you're not here for the right reason. Secondary is to get to know somebody close enough that you can say, that's my friend. And when you say, I'll pray for you, you know exactly why you're praying for them. Why? Because you know what they need prayer for. And that's another reason in it. We have four people are going to come up and tell you their experiences on going through the becoming a friend. And I'm going to start with L. Good morning, everybody. Well, me and Jeff started meeting on a regular basis. It started with coffee. Now we're friends. So I've made two other friends, a young lady. We always go out to lunch every once a month. Anywhere from Denny's to Burger King. And their friend is Jim. We always go out for coffee and they share what's on our hearts. And that's what I'm friend means to me. We just share our feelings with each other.
Thank you, Bill. Cheryl, would you like to come up and explain? I know you don't want to. I will give you the advice I gave Sue many months ago. When you stand up here and you look at these people, go, I'm talking to my family. Because are you her family? Yes. Um, I called Jeff and I said, I really want to speak, you know, about the one on one. And then I thought about it and I had a lot to say and I didn't know what was most important to say. So I'm kind of leaving it up to the Lord to direct me. So give me a minute to think about this. Um, I, I guess what I really want to say is I lost my best friend three years ago. Maybe it's not three, two years ago in 21. And, um, I relied on that relationship heavily. And when he was gone, it wasn't just the emptiness of losing him, but I needed a friend. And I remembered that he had said, Cheryl, you should really give Judy a call. She'd be a good friend. And I remembered that. And so I kind of think that's kind of how it started in a way. And I was hoping that Judy would speak first. That's why I gave that scrunch on my face when he said Cheryl. But, um, and I, okay, I also I want to say, because I've been there, and if you're feeling in your heart that you need a friend, or why is it when I go to church, I say hi, and, and then I leave, and then the rest of the week I feel not complete without a friend, or I could really use a phone call, or if you're in that position, God's got you in that position for a reason. He wants you to feel it, to know what it feels like, and then stand up, go over to the phone, and call somebody. It's just that simple. But, uh, yeah, Judy and I have a really good relationship, and it's not just our one-on-one. I've relied on her for prayer, for, because of the prayer chain, and prayer individually for a long time. But she's a good friend, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people here I would call good friends to. And um, I just encourage you to um, think beyond what you think you're capable of and trust in God. Thank you, Cheryl. Before I give it the next one, I was sitting over there pondering something, which I do on occasion. You know the last song we sang? How many remember what it was? You just sang it. How great thou art. Try something. This is an experiment for you to try sometime. Take it and pray the verses. Leave the chorus out. Just pray the verses. You ever think about that? Oh, Lord, my God, is I an awesome wonder. Consider all the things that hands have made. Just go through it as a prayer. It's awesome. Just leave me with that. Darlene, come tell us about friendship. Okay. Um, my friend says that I have a special um, way of finding people that I need to be friends with. But they need to be friends with me too. And uh, so uh, when we decided to do this one-on-one, -on -one, um, I don't know exactly how that happened, how we uh, got assigned, but uh, Linda Williams and myself um, just connected. And that dear little, I'm going to call her my little sister, okay? And um, so when she first started coming to church here, she had surgery, and oh my, uh, <laughs> she was so fragile, and I just loved her immediately, and we prayed for her, for her surgery. And you know, when you pray for someone that you don't even know, and um, you go through that, it's great when you get to know them. And so um, 
So our friendship kind of started at that time. And uh, then um, we don't always get a chance to uh, be together, but we talk on the phone. And um, I'm sorry that she isn't here today because she's having a tough day. So if you think of Linda, uh, remember her because um, she has a lot of uh, trials and problems she's been through a lot in her lifetime things i couldn't even imagine and when she shared with me i mean i'm just uh sitting there probably with my eyes and mouth open uh, because um, she has gone through so much and it was so great for us to have that uh, continuity of sharing with one another and um, even though I hadn't experienced anything that Linda had. And so um, then as we became better friends, we met and we had lunch together. And do you know, lunch isn't an hour. Lunch is like two and a half hours. And so we had a good time chatting and um, then, um, so then it's quite a little while before we get together again, but we talk on the phone. And um, her story that she was going to tell today was about, um, she called me one night on her way to the hospital. And she has um, friends that have a mother, and she calls her Mother Mary. Her name is Mary, but um, Linda called her mom. And so she called me, and she was on her way to the hospital. And she said, Darlene, would you say a prayer for me? I'm going up. She was very bad. And, and they didn't expect that she was going to live very long. And so Linda had volunteered. The rest of her family had been there all day long with her and Linda volunteered to go up and spend the night with her and so she called me and she was driving she drive well I guess she's got one of those deals she can talk to me while she's driving and um, so I prayed and I prayed for Mary and I prayed for Linda that she would be uh, there for this lady who we didn't know if she was going to make it through the night. And the next day, she called me, and she said, guess what? I, I just saw a miracle. And I said to her, oh, tell me about it. And she said uh, that during the time she was there, Mary opened her eyes and knew that Linda was there. And um, do you know, to this day, Mary is in her home, and she's, I don't know, she's probably close to my age, and uh, or maybe a little younger, but uh, she got through that uh, at the hospital. And so um, that was Linda's story to me, and which was, we come alongside each other, uh, she shares with me uh, her um, desires and her um, problems, and I share with her, and this morning when she called me and said she couldn't come, I said, let's pray. So we prayed over the phone, and that is always, I used to have a friend that done that for me. So I was real glad to do that with Linda. And then um, we went, uh, the next time we got together, that was another two and a half hour lunch. And in my little black bag, I have a little surprise. And um, so Savannah is her daughter, and Savannah went with us to lunch. Well, Savannah gets a little bored sometimes. And so her mom then uh, said, okay, you can put quarters in that machine and you can see what you can get. Well, she put quarters in the machine and 
this is what she got out of the machine. And she seemed to think that Darlene needed this. And so Savannah gave me this little blue bear, and, uh, was, which was very precious. And so I carry this blue bear with me in my car. And it reminds me when I see the bear to say a quick little prayer for Savannah and for Linda, who has um, a big responsibility there. And so it has been really great getting to know Linda and Savannah. And um, uh, I have grown in a different way because of knowing uh, her life and her life story. And so it's been quite a deal. It's been very, very interesting. And I love her dearly. And uh, so my sister, little Linda, I'm here saying your story too. Thanks. You just saw two miracles. You heard of one with Linda's friend. And if you've ever played a claw machine to get one of those bears, the fact she got it, I used to fix them, trust me, I know how they work. That was a miracle that she got that bear. <laughs> Judy, you wanna come talk to your family? Good morning. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, good morning. <laughs> so my story is, I actually have two. I wanted to first give my side of the story of me and Jeff. And yes, Jeff spoke a couple of weeks ago about how we met in the pool at the gym. And he was really being nudged by the Holy Spirit to ask me to come to church, but he was fighting that a little bit, saying, yeah, she's already got a church, she doesn't want to come. Well, finally he asked me, and I said, oh yeah, that sounds good, yeah, maybe. So I get home, and I'm thinking, I already got a church. Why would I want to change churches? So the Holy Spirit was kind of pushing me, and we saw each other at the gym again. And he said, what he said to me would just crack me up. So he said, I'm preaching this weekend. You should come and laugh at me. And because he said that, I said, okay, I will. And I could feel like the Holy Spirit was telling me, yes, you need to do this. So that's how I ended up here. And you haven't gotten rid of me since. <laughs> so, but anyway, yes, the Holy Spirit did push me to come in here. And I did. I felt welcomed. I felt loved. You have all accepted me and it just meant so much to me. But last year, we were asked to make connections with one another. And so I prayed about it, and there a lot of names came to my, my head. And it was like, hmm, I just don't know. So I was kind of dragging my feet a little bit. And the phone rings. It is Cheryl Crawford. And Cheryl said, Judy, I'm going to get a puppy. Would you come with me to, you know, pick up the puppy and meet the guy and whatever? I don't want to do it alone. Well, we had talked before about how we have both had dachshunds. And I was just thrilled. It absolutely just thrilled me that she wanted me to go with her to pick out her baby, <laughs> or pick up her baby. But anyway, that's where we first met sweet little Sadie. She's just such a sweetheart. But then I was at church for a meeting and I mentioned to Pastor Jim, yeah, I went with Cheryl and we picked out a puppy. And he said, 
Judy, that's a connection. And I went, a duh. So it dawned on me, Sharon would be a great person to connect with. So we started connecting. Um, the first time we went to, it was kind of a European Russian little market, deli, that we were there before Christmas. And the two of us really got into looking at all the fun foods and the little things in the shop. It was really fun. We really enjoyed it. And then we went to lunch afterwards. And it's kind of like Darlene said, the lunch, it lasted, I don't know, a couple, three hours, maybe, I don't know. We were there a long time. But we were having a really good time. So, and then... Since then, we've gone to several lunches. We went and saw a movie together, and that was really fun because it was a movie my husband would not have gone to, but it was cool that I had somebody to go to because I probably wouldn't have gone if Cheryl had not gone with me. And then um, we also have plans that we want to go bird watching. We were going to do it in the spring, and then it was kind of cool and whatever. So we haven't got that done yet. But both of us were really excited when we decided we need to go bird watching. So that's still on the list, Cheryl. we got to do that. <laughs> so the bottom line is this has just been such a blessing. There's times she'll text me or she'll just send me a picture of Sadie and say, you know, Sadie grabs something that's running around and keep it in away from her. So it's, it's silly. It makes me laugh. Often, because she does text, I shoot a little prayer up. Sometimes it's that Sadie's being <laughs> good for her, because I do know sometimes it's hard for her. She's trying to rest, and Sadie's being a little pain. But... The communication, I think, is what key is key to making the friend. And I would really encourage each and every one to fill out the little sheet. And if you didn't get one today, we do have some back there by the basket that you can do that. And it kind of made me think, what verse would I think would go with this? So I came up with Galatians 6, 2. It says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. But I also think that we need to carry each other's joys. Pray for each other, and we will become a stronger church. And then when we have outside people come in, they're going to feel welcome and loved too. So that's all I have to say. Make a friend. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Now the nuts and bolts, how does this work? You go, hey, how does this work? Well, I'll tell you how it works. If you want to be, what we will do is we can set you up with somebody who is looking for a friend. What we do is, if you put your name on the thing and go, yes, I want to, we will look at them and we will give you three people. And you can go, okay, Lord, which, three, which one of these do you want me to be a friend with? And Lord, the Holy Spirit will tell you. And then you can make the next step from there. But you don't have to go out unless the Holy Spirit says, I want you to go talk to that person, which he does. But if he doesn't for you, we will give you a list of three, three possible people that you can connect with. So if you feel like you want to be one, or if you want to be connected with, you go, well, I don't know if I want to do that, but I could sure use a friend. You put your name on there, and we'll put you on the list of the three people that somebody may contact. How's that? Does that work for you? I hope so. Let me get my eyes out again. You now see how it works. It's not that bad. I'm going to close this with what Jeff wrote. 
because Jeff is involved in this too, but he's not here today. He says, before we started this program, I was always thinking I should get together with this person or that person, but it just didn't happen. He said, now I am enjoying getting together with Al. He said, when I started meeting with Al, it's like I will be an encouragement to Al. Until he started meeting with Al and realized Al is being an encouragement to me. So I was standing here going, what would my definition of a friend be? And I was thinking what Darlene said, a friend is someone you can call with either a request or a blessing that you want to share. You just got to share with somebody. A friend is someone you can call and go, you know what happened to me? You're not going to believe what God did for me. That is a friend. He said, I was enjoying meeting with Al so much that he started meeting with Pete. So now he's actually got two people he's meeting with. So, and it may work out that way for you too, because there may be more than one person that you're going, you know, I think I'd like to know that person a little bit better. And you know how to do it? Put your name on a sheet of paper and put it in the basket back there. And we'll see what the Lord does for you. Let's close before, and then Tim's going to do what Tim does so well. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we're leaving how you do this in your hands. Because, Lord, sometimes this is way beyond us. And we recognize the fact that nothing is way beyond you. Lord, I just ask that your spirit will move in our hearts. That, Lord, we will want to get to know somebody better. And, Lord, that you will give us that person to get to know better. And, Lord, I just ask that when you do, that we will recognize it, that we realize it's from you. Lord, we just thank you for what you've done this morning. We thank you for this time that we've been able to spend worshiping you in this way. Just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Tim.
All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, his tongues will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, his bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, oh, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, oh, Great are you, Lord. We'll see you next week. Don't forget your lawn chairs.